Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. Did you have to tell a partner that you had cancer or do you still have to tell a partner that you have cancer? Well, I was walking in this walkathon in Florida. The American Association for Cancer Research has a big walkathon before the big research convention. And I was just walking along by myself and I would catch up with all different groups of people and find out why they were walking in the walkathon, what was their connection. And so I'm just meeting all these different people and I happened to stumble upon these two women from Florida. And one of them told me this story. The one woman told me that she was very stoic, that when she found out she had cancer, she just did not want to talk about it. She didn't want to talk to her husband about it. She just needed a lot of time to process what was going on. And then after a month, she asked her husband to go to dinner with her. And she said that she was finally ready to discuss it. And she said, I just really want to appreciate that you really let me process this and that you weren't all over me. And I really appreciate that you let me handle this the way I needed to handle it in my time frame and on my terms. And I just thought that was really gracious that she really acknowledged her husband. And then her husband says, well, you've been so honest may I be honest with you? And she said, of course. And he said, thank God you got this first. (laughs) I don't know. I just love the honesty of that whole exchange. And I loved that he was terrified. And although he loved his wife, he was so happy that she learned all about cancer and had to go through it first because he just didn't feel like he could deal with it. So bravo, like really to that couple for just dealing with it with humor and with honesty. And that leads me to segue into my own experience with my own partner when I was re-diagnosed with cancer and had this recurrence. And I kid you not, he went into complete and utter denial to the point where he couldn't even say the word cancer. He called it candy. And anytime I was talking about it, he referred to the situation as candy. And I love candy. So I think that might be where the trigger came in. But to have a partner that was completely unable to face the reality of my situation was utterly confusing. And I had a little child that I had to honestly help process through the fact that I was going through cancer treatment again and was going to be bald again and be taken away to do all these treatments. So I really needed a partner that could support the reality of what I was going through. And I'm glad to say that after a lot of therapy, this person was able to finally process that I had cancer and admit that I had cancer and apologize for this very bizarre psychological part, I guess, (laughs) that happened. But it just showed me that couples really process this in so many different ways. So here's what I want to suggest. 
a strategy for you to try. Date nights are super important for any couple, but particularly for couples going through this cancer experience. So the first thing I want you to do is designate at least one time a week that you guys are going to go through a date night and really try to keep that. That's very typical among couples. And that date could be a breakfast date, a lunch date. If you're too tired to do night dates, fit them in during daytime hours. That's number one. But here's the second date that I'm going to suggest. And this is going to be a logistics date. And this is all the logistics about your lives. Not cancer, just typical couple logistics. So that could be bill paying, it could be budgeting, it could be what couples you're going to go out with, if you're going to book a vacation, planning a family holiday, food shopping. I mean, this is just really typical logistics. Then I'm going to suggest a third date. And this third date is the universe of cancer. These are the things that you actually have to deal with when you're going through cancer. This could be the tough stuff. It could be sitting down to make a will, to make a care plan, to make a durable power of attorney, all that legal stuff that it really makes sense if you take care of it before you get too sick or incapacitated from a surgery. Or it could just be because things happen in life suddenly in your health and you don't know. So this date, this cancer universe date is really dealing with who's going to drive you or pick you up from chemotherapy or who's going to take you to and from a surgery, who's going to accompany you to doctor's appointments. Sometimes your spouse isn't the best person. So all that logistical stuff that has to happen about your cancer treatment should really be handled on the cancer date, right? So I'm giving you three different dates to schedule in a week. And if you can put those boundaries around each date, you'll really be able to have fun and potential intimacy on your date date, your romantic date, And that keeps out all the daily logistics that can be so mind-numbing and so boring about daily life together as a couple. And then lastly, the date that's not so fun, but it actually has to happen. And that's the logistical date about the realities of your cancer treatment. I've already done at least one episode on intimacy and cancer And that one was called Cancer Belly Dancing. But this strategy can really help keep the intimacy in the relationship. It can really help increase the moments of tenderness and sensuality within the relationship while you're going through treatment and after treatment. And we're going to do more episodes on this because no one really talks about it. And it's something that I value so much and I valued so much while I was going through treatment. So I really want to help you keep that love and tenderness and intimacy and sensuality in your relationship as you go through treatment. So I hope you try this. And as always, I would love to know if this helps with your relationship because it really helped me. And I want to hear if you have any other ideas about this that we can share. So go to comedycures.org and hit the record us button or the write us button and let me know how this works for you. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. I hope you guys know this, but Beating Cancer Daily is a listener and donor-supported podcast and community. 
So if you have some extra change, I'd love you to go to comedycures.org and make a donation today of whatever level is comfortable for you. And it will be tax deductible to the extent allowed by law because Comedy Cures is a nonprofit 501c3 organization founded from my chemo chair, April 1999, and we've been going strong ever since. So please consider making a donation today and help our community and this podcast thrive. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.